All right, we are in for a treat this morning. I love that I get to introduce my good friend who will be sharing with us. Um, I have known Pastor Roger Ross for, I don't know, a long time now it feels like. Probably it's getting close to 10 years maybe. Um, I started playing pickup basketball with him. Uh, we got to work alongside each other and do ministry together. And um, I just so appreciate his heart for the Lord. And uh, I'm excited to hear what he has to share for us today. Uh, many of you know Roger as uh, a member of Epiphany, as somebody who was a part of the launch team, um, as somebody who has received the call of the Lord to go and to plant a church um, in Turtle Mountain Reservation in North Dakota, um, our first church plant out of Epiphany. And Roger sort of exemplifies all those missional priorities that we talked about. He um, has a heart to make and deepen disciples. He is a servant leader. He embodies that. And he's planting a church. So he's our first um, first one to, to plant a healthy multi-ethnic missional church. And we're excited about that. Um, a lot of you guys might not know that Roger has a past life as a football player. So he was like, I don't know, like an all-conference punt returner at the University of Kansas. Um, a lot of people don't know that about him. So if you're trying to chase him somewhere, you're probably not going to catch him, especially if he's got a ball in his hands. And I know you're not going to tackle him. Um, so he brings that same passion that he brought to the football field. Um, he brings that same passion to everything that he does. And so I'm excited to hear from Roger this morning, my good friend. Um, so I'm excited for what he has for us and what he has for you. So take it away, Pastor Roger Ross. Amen. Oh, man. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. <clears throat> God is good. God is good. Thank you, Mike, man, for that powerful introduction, man. Hey, this is the locker room, baby. We in the locker room. We trying to get better out here. <laughs> Praise God, baby. We in the locker room. As Pastor Kevin will always say, you know, this is where we, we find out what we need to do as a church, where we need to grow as a person. You know, I don't know about you, but I'm excited to praise God this morning. I don't know about you, but God is good. Somebody please drop a fire in the chat and say, God is good. <laughs> hey, I don't know about you, but uh, this has been a great, great sermon series uh, that uh, me and Pastor Paulita Todd Hunter has, is uh, tackling together. You know, Mike said nobody could tackle me, but I think me, uh, me and pa me and Pastor Polly are tackling this thing together, uh, <laughs> and and that's a, it's such a blessing to be able to, to do this sermon together. I mentioned last week you can't be your best self by yourself, right? Uh, and I also mentioned you don't go as far as your dream; you go as far as your team. So I do thank uh, uh, you guys for this opportunity that we're coming together to fulfill God's purposes through this ministry, through Epiphany. Thank you for those on the behind the scenes that's uh, making this happen. You know, this pandemic has caused us to uh, really think about, you know, uh, not make excuses, but make adjustments, right? We have no excuses as body of believers, but we can make the adjustments. And I think I'm proud to say that Epiphany has made the adjustments to do, uh, be able to manage and adjust things online to make so, so we can continue to fill the calling of God's life on our on our purpose for life and why we're here and, and the purpose of living well. Uh, thank you, uh, Pastor Paulita. She uh, dropped the message on what it means to be a vessel for Christ. And I listened to that. That was powerful. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, lad, the week before that, I preached on uh, a life of well done. You know, we, we talked about a uh, life of well done starts on the inside, you know, and I, and I gave a, a sticky statement last week on uh, we are human beings, not human doings, right? So it's important to understand that, that, that sticky statement to, to where God really wants to take us in our pursuit to living well or living a well done life, right? For God is far more interested in who we are than what we do. God is so much more interested in who we are and what we become. 
in this life. So the question I have for you too, is that what are you becoming in this pursuit of living well? As you think about this, these sermon series, this sermon series and what it means to live well. Uh, I'm gonna get right into it, you guys. I'm trying to, you know, I'll uh, ask you, we get right into the sermon. We're gonna get right into, got a powerful scripture for us to just, I uh, trying to look at, you know, me being a, a pastor, you know, I'm trying to understand a lot of different things. There's so much going to this. I got so much work to be done to do as I, I pursue this calling to understand what it means to truly be a pastor, what it means to truly uh, uh, invite people to truly take Christ into the heart and to really practice this this lifestyle and, 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 and keep it at the forefront. So let's get right into it. Uh, the scripture for today. Scripture, we're going to go right into the scripture. Uh, Mark 9, uh, 14 through 29. You know, we're going to write into the scripture, right into it. Uh, when, when Mark 9, 14 through 29 stays here. When they returned to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd surrounding them. And some teachers of the religious law were arguing with them. When the crowd saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with awe. And they ran to greet him. What is, what is all this arguing about, Jesus asked. One of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, teacher, I brought my son so you could heal him. He's possessed by an evil spirit that won't let him talk. And who, whenever he's, the spirit seizes him, it throws him violently to the ground. Then he, he form, forms, form, forms at the mouth and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast out the evil spirit, but they couldn't do it. Jesus said to them, you faithless people, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought the boy. But when the evil spirit saw Jesus, it threw the child into a violent convulsion and fell and he fell to the ground, writhing and foaming at the mouth. How long has this been happening? Jesus asked. Jesus asked the boy, the boy's father. He replied, since he was a little boy, the spirit often threw, throws him into the fire, into the, into the water, trying to kill him. Have mercy on us. Help us if you can. What do you mean if I can? Jesus asked. Anything is possible if a person believes. The father instantly cried out, I do believe, but he he helped me overcome my belief. I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. So when Jesus saw that, saw that the crowd of onlookers was growing, he rebuked the evil spirit. Listen, you spirit that makes the boy unable to hear and speak. He said, I command you to come out of this boy and never enter him again. Then the spirit screamed and threw the boy into another violent convulsion and left him. The boy appeared to be dead. A murmur ran through the crowd as the people said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and helped him to his feet. And he stood up. After when Jesus, after afterwards, when Jesus was alone in the house with his disciples, they asked him, why couldn't we cast out that evil spirit? Jesus replied, this kind can be cast out only by prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we just ask that as we come to, uh, as we prepare our hearts for this worship, for your word that you have, Lord God, I ask you as I decrease, you increase, Lord God, you uh, set the tone for what you want people's hearts to say, what you want people's hearts to, to receive, Lord God, let it stay, not go in, the, let it not go in one ear and out, Lord God, let this stick to our hearts, let this stick so we can transform lives that bring you glory, Lord God, and also to help us to become more like you each and every day. Help us to know that we can't do this alone. We need you, Lord, Heavenly Father. We need you in such a way, Lord God. We ask that you just continue to fill us up, Lord God. Let this word transform somebody's life. Let this word uh, be a, 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 a starting point to go forward with what you have people, their mission and purpose for life, Lord God. 
And we ask that this word, not just that we, uh, we come to help us to come to keep living well as we're here on earth, Lord God. As we as we're here, Lord God, help us to set the tone and the foundation of what it means to truly be fully in you, Lord God. We ask you just come over us, speak to us today, speak through us such a way, Lord God. Let your words be clear. And in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. The title of this uh, series, part three, is A Change is Going to Come. Living Well, this is, the title is A Change is Going to Come. Man, I don't know about you, the, it's, ever since this pandemic, there's some changes that's been taking place it's all over the world. Changes is, is going to come. And I, I have a question for you. How bad do you want the change to come? You know, I... I I have been through this time of just learning and, and seeing and making an assessment of what God has has been doing throughout this world, not just throughout this world, but throughout this uh, time as a church, right? As a church body, as a church, as a believers, you know, uh, if there's a time more than ever that God is getting the believers, the believers, the body of believers' attention is right now. Uh, just as a church, uh, we still have work to do. Pastor Kevin preached on the state of the church a while back. And I just, then I thought, and I think I was thinking about that series and, and the state of the church, but God, I think God has also wanted us to address the state of the church, not just as a, a body of the church, but as individuals as well. This, this pandemic had caused uh, a huge number of believers to fall fall from their faith, uh, not taking this faith journey very serious. And another statistic, the pandemic has shown, has caused others to really grow deeper in the relationship with Christ. You know, so that's, and, and, it, and that's important to understand as you think about this too, you know. Uh, I don't want us you to leave here today thinking I'm judging you at any, by, by any means, but I am making, uh, I am, uh, making a, uh, uh, an assessment of what I feel God wants us to do because God is the only judge. He's the only one that can do uh, change in our lives, right? Uh, he's the only one that can make that change that if we give it to him. And I, and I want us to use this boy's issue as a metaphor for our issue today, okay? Use this boy, st the story of this boy this, as a metaphor for our issues today, especially in the church body in which we are a uh, uh, body of believers. Uh, it's important, you know, as, as I mentioned uh, a few weeks ago about the text, the, the text, the, uh, the Bible, you know, the believers and experts, sometimes we get caught up on the history of the Bible. In, in, in particular, a certain text, we think that, that, that we only, it doesn't, just because it only applied, it happened back then that it only stays back there, right? Uh, it's important that we uh, apply uh, these texts as an application for where we are today, where, what times are we living in right now? As we have to see, as I, as I mentioned to us, we have to see the Bible as a life book, not a history book, okay? I wanna make that so clear. The Bible is our manual for real change and a life and a living a life of well done. I want us to understand that, you know, we got to look at this boy's issue. The, there's a there's a difference between the boy, there's an issue between the boy's issue. There's a difference between the boy's issue and our issue. There is a difference between the boy's issue and our issue today. The boy's issue today is visible. You can see that he's having the issue, but in our issues today is invisible. Ha! Huh. I have to stop right there. I don't know about you, but I, I serve a God who can change the invisible, to change some things in us that we can't see. And I think, and I look at that boy's, and I and I look at that boy's situation in in, in this text here. You got to look, let's just take a look at what was going on, going on around the boy's path to being healed. Let's look at it. Sometimes in order to see change happen, you have to assess your surroundings. You have to assess what is not happening and what is happening. 
So let's look at this boy's issue as we go through this. Let's look at tech. Let's look at 14. Let's look. It says, when they returned to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd surrounding them. Some teachers, some teachers of religious law were arguing with them. So that tells me that people in this crowd were religious in rhetoric. They were religious people, but they were unbelieving in practice. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. They knew ritual religions, right? But they did not believe that the religion could actually change things. Ah, Jesus then said, bring the boy to me. That is a key that is a, a key phrase throughout this whole text here. Bring the boy to me. Ah, I have a question for you. What are you bringing to Christ? What are you bringing to him? Are you trying to fix it on your own? Are you trying to change things on your own? What are you bringing to him? That's the question I pose today. What are you bring? What are you doing? What are we as believers? What are we trying to keep hold on that only we think we we need to change this but god needs to change can change this well god you change this but not this but they were religious and they were religious folks they were unbelieving they was they knew the law they knew religious things but they but they couldn't change things if you look at 17 verse 17 talks about that one of them in the crowd spoke up and said teacher i brought my son so you could heal him he is possessed by an evil spirit that won't let him talk. And whenever the spirit sees him, it throws him violently to the ground. Then he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and become rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast out the evil spirit, but they couldn't do it. In other words, <laughs> in other words, Jesus is saying, y'all, look, I know this boy has been to church. Bring him to me. <laughs> Oh, boy, it's crazy. I know this boy has gone to other religion ex religion experts, right, who has filled him with wrong advice. I don't know. I don't know about you. Sometimes uh, they're good people, I don't know, but we, we seek change, but we go to good people, but sometimes good people can give us bad advice. They're good people, but they can give us bad advice, right? Bring him to me. I know this boy has had religion. He's had religion, but this boy needs change, y'all. He needs he needs change, right? Bring, bring him to me. Jesus keeps keeps bring him to me. This text also shows that it's not that religions has failed you failed him, right? It's not that the religion has failed him, but it's that it that sometimes we ask the wrong people for help. You know, sometimes religion uh, also shows that it, it's not always religion that has it has uh, um, caused us to be at a state where we're at today. It shows that sometimes it's you. It's sometimes it's wrong advice, wrong people. True change may come when we identify the one who knows how to remove what we can't rectify. We got to identify what we can't rectify. We got to bring. Hit, bring the boy to him. I'm at you. I'm saying, make sure you see. Don't just get caught up on the boy issue. Look at what are some issues in your life that has caused you not to live well. What is it, man? We got to think about that. We all have. We're we're here. We're still here. So we got some growing to do. We got some work to do. You there maybe this true change may come when you are like it's so important that, that we understand that true change may come when we identify the one who knows how to remove what we can't rectify. We gotta think about that. That's when true change is going to come. Church, body of believer, pastor, minister, law, that who believes, you know. I truly, I think, I take this, this is, you know, I truly believe that those who claim to know God the best sometimes tend to misrepresent him the most. We may know God, they know God, but sometimes we're not representing him in a way that 
as especially in the church body, the state of the church, sometimes we claim we know God, but are we representing him the way that we he would like? Are we do we have our own agendas that we need to get done? There's just things, you know. I believe the first step to towards a life of change is when we decide to move beyond the church and step towards Christ. Oh, Holy Spirit. Somebody drop a fire in the chat right there. You know we got to move beyond church and step towards Christ. That is when change can take place. Man, drop a fire in the chat. I know that that's something we need. We got to not be so caught up in the, in the building, right? But be a, pe be a people that transforms by the way we do. What, will we, what are we becoming? Not what we do. What are we becoming for a well-lived life? Like one of the reasons I believe, I'm just, I was going, this is one of the reasons. I'm not saying this is the reason, okay? <laughs> walk with me here. Walk with me, please. Uh, one of the reasons I believe people don't go want to go to church, it's not that Christians are good workers, y'all. It's that some Christians are not good people. <laughs> hey, we got work to do, church. Sometimes, you know, you got to ask yourself, you know, I'm going to read that again. Sometimes, uh, why I believe some people don't go to church is because it's not that we're good workers, right? It's that some Christians are not good people. We have to ask yourself, are you the reason people don't go to church? Are you the reason that, that people don't want to, that don't see Christ as, as they should because your lifestyle, the way you live, the way you go about, the way you practice these ri religious rituals, you 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 just steady stuck on to tradition, right? You're stuck on tradition, but it's not allowing you to transform. You're not allowing you to allow God to use you because you're stuck on the law so much. You're stuck on certain things so much that keep you from being religious and ritual, but you're not in practice. What are you? It's a practice. It's a it's a lifestyle, and and real change requires an investment. Oh, that's good. Thank you, Jesus. Real change requires an investment. You know, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's so important that we need to get that in us. And, 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 and you know, what I, I think about this too, is you never hear people say, and when you come to think about when people leave the church, you never hear people say, I want to go to, I, I don't ever want, I don't want to go to church because the altos and the tenors couldn't hit their notes. <laughs> I thought that's funny, y'all, because, you know, I was a tenor, right? I sang in the choir. <laughs> at my church but i never you know i was i couldn't i i could I, i'm not a good singer i'm gonna be real i'm gonna keep it real i couldn't sing well at all okay but uh, i couldn't sing it well but i but i but i never heard people say i'm leaving the church i mean they may have but i never heard people say well they sing, the choir can't sing i ain't going to church nah i heard but i have heard people say this though i'm not going to church because the person should have had high character should have had, I have, they, the people in leadership, the people in us, you know, that, that sometimes we blame, you can't blame other people though. You can't blame the church for why you're not going to church. You know, it's important that, you know, we got to stop blaming. I, I'm just, I want to go back to that a little bit. Sometimes we do have to stop blaming religion. All right. For, for our problems. <laughs> we got to stop re blaming religion for our problems. Your problems could be that you asking the wrong people for help. I had to sign though for me. Sometimes we, we ask the wrong people. What are you, who are you asking for help? That's critical. So I'm going to give you some, uh, some, some, uh, some four soul care reminders. Ah, soul care reminders that I believe God wants us to activate in our lives to see real change in a, in a life of well done and a lived well life, right? I'm going to give you that. But in the pre, this ain't the first time, y'all, that Jesus was in a crowd. This wasn't the first time. If you go to the previous chapter before in Mark 34, when Jesus was in the crowd, he was talking to the disciples, right? Uh, and, and a big crowd, you know, about who who wants whoever wants to be my disciple must de deny themselves, right? Take up their cross and follow me. 35, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me for and for the gospels will save it. 
But what good is for someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit his soul? <laughs> or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words is an adulterous and sinful generation, the son of man will be ashamed of, ashamed of them when, they, when he comes to, in the father's glory with heaven and angels. Man, I have to talk about that. School. It, this some soul care, some soul care stuff that we need to live well. We have to identify what is going on in our souls, what's on the inside of us that is causing us not to live well. And then as a body, we have to, as a church family, as a believers, we have to uh, identify these things. You know, Philippians, Paul talked about this. He, in Philippians, I talked about Latin two weeks ago about Philippians, what it means to experience joy and happiness in the midst of situations that can be caused you to not feel joyful. But in this, in this God is also in Mark is dressing our soul care. What is it that he, he is setting the tone for us as believers? You know, he's setting the tone for some 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 soul care reminders that we need from this text. And I and I this is what I know that God gave us for this text. Before I get right into that, I want us to understand. Look, there's there's some things that I want us to I want us to uh that, that I want us to get to, you know. There we use a lot of things and as church people that sounds good, but they're not it's not sound. Right, but we we lose we we say a lot of things that may not that may sound good, but it's not sound. Sometimes we build our lives on on sand, but not or, or is it built on rock? What are you building your life? Is it is it is it rock or sand? And then I think one of the things that is that we're we're as believers sometimes we use uh, this phrase a lot. <laughs> We use this phrase a lot in, 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 in the, as a people of God or just in people in general uh, that we use, we say, fake it till you make it. That sounds good, y'all, but that's not sound. That sounds real good. Fake it till you make it. I don't think, I don't think God is interested in our fakeness at all. <laughs> I don't think God is interested in our fakeness. I think, he, I believe that God wants authentic, real believers. I think fake it till you make it is a dangerous trap for believers from living a well and changed lives that bring him glory. Just because it sounds good, right? Doesn't mean it's sound. So the first soul care I want to give you now is face it till you make it. Ah, you have to face it till you make it. Look, we can't change what we don't face, y'all. <laughs> oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Hey, we can't change uh, what we don't face. A big part of, of my growth as a believer uh, and as believers is having the courage to face the past, y'all. I had to face some issues in order to get where I'm at today. And I'm still facing some issues that I'm that I'm trying to work through to live a well life. But but some of us having uh have had issues. Look, I'm gonna be real with you. I'm gonna be get, keep it real. Somebody say in the chat, keep it real. Just tell just tell me keep it real because God is not interested in our fakeness, y'all. He wants us to be authentic, he wants us to face it so he can change it. If you look at the the the, the, the story of the, the boy, he had to face the issue that he was having. He couldn't run from it. He had to face that he was being possessed. He had to face that. He couldn't hide from that. Some people, some of us are facing difficult times dealing with the fact that you were raised to be racist. Who? Don't lose, don't, don't go, I hope you're still there. Some of us raised to be that way. In the state of the church, we are, we are this church is exposing the true meaning of what you, to really follow Christ. In the body of church, classism, I talked about this in James, classism, racism, all those things, the isms was, was, was in the church, right? Some of us taught that, you know, I, I'm be, I'm be honest, I grew up in a family, so in, a, in, a, in a household, not all my family, but I have families, uncles and uh, nephews that are uh, un uncles and aunties that kind of, uh, you know, told me some things. Look, they was good people, right? Good people, but it wasn't it wasn't right. 
you know, doing the things that was told to me, you know, I'm gonna be real. Uh, dating out, don't date outside your man or your race. Like I, I didn't look, I, I mean, let me get the tell. I dated within my race several times, but I was told that at a young age, didn't know why though. So, you know, I understood that. And, and that is a form of racism, right? That's a form of racism when you think about that, right? You know, uh, and, and you got to think, but there's some things like there's some things in my past too that uh, some of you may not know. Some of you may know I was married before. I was married before my wife and now I, I was divorced. Right. And for a while, uh, uh, for a while, that is those issues. That issue made me ashamed to talk about because I knew as a believer that nobody uh, divorce is not is not yes I you know I, I get that it made me feel ashamed it made me not feel free to like I can't praise God because that felt being told that that's that's you know you that shouldn't be good well I know that but I was that that happened to me I didn't see that happening but I had to face the fact that I had to in order for me to uh move on to another relationship I had to face that fact and learn from that relationship so I could be ready for the next relationship. So I won't be ready. So I couldn't hide the fact that I was divorced. That could have kept me down, right? But I didn't allow that. What are some things in your life that you know you need to face in order for things to change? I'm just challenging challenge, God is challenging the church body, challenging us as believers. That's who he's talking to here. Men in particular, I'm going to talk about men in particular. We are taught to cover up our, our hurts, hangups, and habits. <laughs> I got that from the, uh, Pastor Rick Warren. You know, sometimes we are taught to cover up our hurts, hangups, and habits. But real men don't cry, y'all. I was told about that. Real men don't cry. Don't you talk about that experience. That would embarrass, be an embarrassment for the rest of your life. There was things that were said like that. I could, So I had to... I had to suppress it. I had to keep it under because I didn't want it to feel like I was, I wasn't, I wasn't, I was tough enough. I, I got I got nothing. I got to walk out like nothing. I got to fake it. I got to fake it till I make it. No, God ain't interested in that. He, you have a story to tell as a church man. You have some testimony that God, that can help somebody else. But the only way you can help somebody else, you have to face your own issue. You have to face the issues that you're that you're struggling to really receive Christ to the fullest. As we talked about this boy in the verse 21, he talked about how long had this been happening? The, Jesus answered the boy's father. He replied, since he was a little boy. How long had this boy been this way? The response of the father. You know, that's the key thing about that. Since childhood. In other words, the boy has been this way for most of his life. But Jesus can change it, y'all. He can change that. He, Jesus can change it. Soul care number two. We, it's important that we must keep hope alive. We got to keep hope alive. This the, the, the father, the boy, they kept hope alive. Even the disciples. They had to somewhere keep this. Something had to disturb them to keep find the help. They was trying to look for help. They kept asking the wrong people, but they kept hope alive. Listen to me. There's hope for you, y'all. There's hope for us as a body of believers. There's hope for us, for every person who has issued since childhood. Let me say this too. We may be, you may be, a, you may not be a child no more, right? Some of adults, we adults now, but, but you may have some childish issues that are affecting you from living well. Oh, man, ouch, that one hurt. Some of us as adults, we got childish issues. This, that hit me. Some of us, we got childish issues. We got stubbornness issues. We got, we power when things don't get our way. We, we do certain things. That's the issue that we got to deal for our soul care. We want to control everything. Oh, part of that, you know, part of my growth and development, you know, that I could, I had to get out from an unhealthy environment. I wanted to do well in my life, but I, in order for me to get out of that in my in my growing up and in a dysfunctional family, sometimes you it's important, you know, getting out of an unhealthy environment can be a part of that. There is hope for every person who feels like they never are going to change, y'all. Because carrying the issue for too long, you've been carrying this issue for too long, and you think, I mean, this ain't gonna never going to change. You got to keep hope alive. 
the hope for every child born in a dysfunctional family. Look, you got to keep hope alive. There's hope for every teenager who picked up habits, traits, idiosyncrasies from their college years uh, that, are, that they're still wrestling with today. Come on, as a church body, we're, we, we're defend, we are depending on some issue that was told to us from some saints back in the day that is no one ain't right. Because you love that person. You want to listen, hang on to their golden word, but you know it ain't right. That's not biblical. I talked about two weeks ago, the, the most important assets for us as believers is the Holy Spirit and God's word. Wow. Those are the two most important assets for us to keep hope alive. The Holy Spirit and God's word is what's going to keep us going. There's hope for every senior citizen who may be thinking that they will, they will never change. This will never change because this is the way I've been, all, been this way all my life. Jesus sees the boy and, and, and sees them that the boy had been in trouble since childhood. But look, one divine encounter with the right person. <laughs> one divine encounter with the right person and his name is Jesus, can change any situation. Man, I don't know about you, but I'm excited about that, that a guy could have left me where I was at, but he saw fit to change me to carry out his, for, his for purposes for my life. He didn't allow me to sit in my situation for too long. I couldn't make excuses for what I was going through. What has happened to me? I had to make the adjustments so I can continue to fulfill God's calling in my life. So I hope you can get that for you, that Jesus wants to change it. Jesus, man, Jesus. It's something about the name of Jesus. The sweetest name of all. Oh, that's all. Oh, that was a song in choir. We used to sing that. The sweetest name, Jesus. 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 I don't know about this power in the name Jesus. Ah, uh, Jesus. Call his name, saints. Jesus. Jesus needs us right now. He we need to call on him. We call on everybody else. Uh, but we forget to call the one. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. One divine encounter can change many things. Some of you may be having issues with uh, belonging and acceptance. There's hope for you. Some of you may be having issue with res being respected and, and or respect and kindness. There's hope for you. Some of you may be having issue with compassion and understanding. There's hope for you. Some of them may be having issues with love and forgiveness. There's hope for you. And then th there's hope for the future that we have finally learned from the past. Ah, I could say that sometimes we just, there's hope that we, there's for the future that we can learn from our past. We can learn from things to become a better, for, for, to become a better body of believers for those that don't know who he is, don't know who can change it. Cause we, we gotta be the Bible that they may not see. They may be, the, we gotta be the Bible that they may not read. So care number three, we must keep believing. That phrase that everything is possible to the one who believes. Look, we got to keep believing. Our soul care requires that we keep believing. Ha. You got, if, if, it, if you have a struggle with your, if there's one thing about your soul, you got to keep believing. If I didn't, if I wouldn't be where I'm at if I didn't keep believing. Ah, I don't know about you. I would, I would not be where I'm at if I stopped believing. Let's look at 19. Let's look at the text here. It says, look, it says in 19, it says, Jesus said to them, you faithless peoples, and, and how long must I be with you? He asked the question, how long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. That's the NIV, New Living Translation. But I like this, this uh, NIV translation right here. He says, you unbelieving generation. Jesus replied, 
How long should I stay with you? How long should I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. He asked all his questions and still said, bring the boy to me. <laughs> he didn't even wait for the masters. Jesus know what he's doing. Sometimes we want to like, God, you need, look, we know he knows what he's doing. Sometimes we got to give Jesus the time and the patience to know, let him do what he do. Yeah, he, he said, bring the boy to me anyway. Bring the boy to me. Right? He was, look, look that's, that's crazy. That's, what do you mean if I, and, and then he asked in 23, he says, what do you mean if I can? Jesus asked. Anything is possible if a person believes. Anything. The father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. Boy, he, that the father immediately shouts back with a response with a sharp, filled, mixed emotion. I believe, he said, but help my unbelief. The truth is, says, we are no different than his father. We are no different than his father. You believe, but unbelief is haunting, haunting your house of faith. You have faith for some things, but not faith for all things. God can, can change this part of my life, but not this part. Oh, hey, that's how we do, God. <laughs> I swear, I'm learning that. God wants everything. I know you have faith because if you didn't have faith, if y'all if y'all didn't have faith in here, you wouldn't be listening to me today. You wouldn't be listening to me today. But there is a part of you that can believe, right? That, that believe in God to save everyone else's marriage, but not your own. Ah, there's a part of you that can believe that God can heal everyone else's body, but not your own. There's a part of you that can believe that God. Uh, is a, is acquired, you can acquire that promotion, but not deliver from that addiction. We want the promotion, but not deliver from a, some addictions. Some of us got some addictions, but we want, we, we want to be acquired. We want that promotion though. There is some sustained stubbornness, man. This is talking to me, y'all. Stubbornness issues that won't go away. No matter how many times you uh, try to remove it in your own strength. We can't do this in our own strength. This, the, that's the issue Jesus wants us to change. We need him. He is speaking. We need to bring the boy to me. Bring your issue to me. That's what we want to talk about. Okay. Sticky, there's a sticky statement that I want you to get. I'm, I've been in this sticky statement season, but this sticky statement right here, there are things about you that you can't see that are hurting you. Therefore, you need people in your life that love you enough to show you. I'm going to think about that. I'm going to say that one more time. There are things about you that you can't see that are hurting you. Therefore, you need people in your life that love you enough to show you. We need that. Jesus looked at the very thing that kept the boy mute, y'all disorderly, bound up with one word. He emancipated a whole boy's life of opp oppression with one word. Look, if you look at this, Jesus didn't even, look, if you look at Jesus didn't even call out the foaming of the mouth. He didn't call that out. He just said, bring the boy to me. He didn't call out the foaming in the dirt. He said, bring the boy to me. He didn't even speak on any distractions or consequences of the larger problem. Why? Because Jesus never addresses all. He never addresses the symptoms that we can't see. He instead addresses the issues that we can't see. Ah, that we can't see. He addresses the issues that we can't see. That's good news right there, y'all. That's good news. I don't know about you, church, but man, there's some issues that I could that I didn't see that God saw me. He saved me from issues that I didn't even see that was gonna happen to me before. There's some issues that we that we that he addresses that we gotta be able to face and see. But he addresses that those things that we couldn't see. He didn't look at the man, he didn't call that out. The church has some issues that we can't see 
that we need Jesus to help us live well and live like Christ, church, body, saints, believers. We need to be better. We need to re-represent Christ in a way to help us to bring those and live in this such a way. The good news is this. The good news, God knows how to wade through symptoms in order to identify the real problem. He knows how to wade through some symptoms to identify the real problem. This, yeah, we, this is a real problem. He's, man, this pandemic has caused some shifting in the church. It exposed what the church was about more than ever. Racism, what is it? Uh, classism in the church, in the body, and believe it. He exposed that throughout this pandemic. He, he truly did. And I've and I seen that. And I, that's my assessment of what I've what we, what I seen today. What is what is the word applying? What are you applying today? What is what you want God to change you from today? And the final soul for the final soul care reminder that I want you to get, you have to remind yourself this to help you with your soul is you can't do it alone. Church, we can't do this alone. We can't do it alone. I go back to singing in the choir. I'm going to talk about that. I, I'm going to go back and talk to about what I brought up when I was singing in the choir before. Look, man, I really couldn't sing. My voice was not great at all by itself. But with the support of other tenors, <laughs> hey, with the support of other tenors, boy, my voice sounded amazing. Couldn't sing the, that verse in the choir uh, by myself alone, but with the voices of everybody, man, hey, I know my choir, I know the, my praise and worship, Cortland can feel me on that one. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, man, but here, yeah, I'm here to let someone know, like, look, you, uh, if you're a manager or, 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 or you trying to manage a group of people in your life, look, I'm here to let you know, like, uh, uh, you don't go as far as your dream. You go as far as your team. I thank God for my support system that my, my family, my children, my pastor, those who have been mentoring, helping me. My team is helping me fulfill this calling. The, the team, you don't go as far as your dream. You go as far as your team. And I thank God for this adjustments that we're making online to be able to serve those. We're, there's no excuses. We have no excuses to not fulfill God's calling. We have to make the adjustments. And that's what we have done with doing this church online, doing things. After the boy was delivered, look, Jesus asked the disciples this very important question in private. They looked at him and said, with uttermost importance, uh, serenity, like they it, it, secured, they looked at him as so much. What can we do? Why couldn't we help do that? Why couldn't we heal them, the boy? Think about that. They asked in private, they asked Jesus this. And it was very a powerful question. Why couldn't we do that? After when Jesus was alone, look at 28, he's talking about that. 28, 29, let's read it. After when Jesus was alone in the house with the disciples, they asked him, why couldn't we cast out the evil spirit? Jesus replied, this kind can be cast out only by prayer. Only by prayer. They wanted to know why they couldn't change the problem and bring healing. They wanted to know why their words didn't have the same weight. They wanted to know what was wrong with their understanding of religion. <laughs> In such a way that they couldn't say say the same thing, but didn't get the dip, got different results. The question is an important one because it first showed that the disciples had humility. Ooh, that was a great. It first showed that disciples had humility. They did not act in, as if they had it all together. Man, we can't be faking this. We have, to, we have to face our issues. They showed that they had to have some humility to get through this. They had to show that they didn't have it all together. They didn't know. In order to receive change from God, you have to dethrone every ideology, philosophy, logical Lord in your life. We have to dethrone those things that we put above God. 
We have to put those, but we have to dethrone those things. What your idea, your way of living is not your way. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. The same question reveals that the disciples knew. It also reveals that the disciples knew who to go to for answers. They were, they knew that they were, were able to identify a reliable source instead of going elsewhere, ended up in the same situation. That, some of us do that. We go to, we don't, we go to every different other, other sources, but we don't go to the source. You, if you want to change, you must identify a reliable source. You must find the right community, the right healer, Jesus, to fix other, what others has broken. You know, there's things that we, some of that, you know, and I close with this. You know, I talked about this. You know, prayer, prayer changes things, y'all. Prayer, look, prayer changes things. Jesus said, oh, this thing can only happen through prayer. This kind can only be cast out only by prayer. Some of we don't pray enough, right? We don't pray. Prayer changes things. What do you know? What does your prayer life consist of? When God says it, y'all, that settles it. Bring the boy to me. We go to everybody else, but we don't bring it to him. I may not be much. You may not. I may not be much, but I do have Jesus' DNA on me, y'all. He's in me. If it's anything, if you're anything like me, sometimes you are, as I close here, sometimes we, sometimes we want to fix everything uh, if you see something broken right if you like me if you see something broken you want to fix it immediately <laughs> some things in our life that god is not going to change immediately we have to understand that there's some things in our life that god is not going to change immediately some things takes time and they you have to some things takes time so if you want to see change every uh Something, some things to change in your life. We must take it one step at a time. We must. I'm praying in this season of 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 a well well wellness of a living well that God that we ask God the real source to help us see areas in our life that we need change so that we can start living well. And we got to make sure that we pray and ask God, seeing life from God's viewpoint, not ours. That is a key ingredient to fulfill God's calling and to live, to see a change come. Look, I'm going to be real. Some things, some stuff automatically gets better when you get better. Just auto. <laughs> some things automatically gets better when you get better. God is not going to just going to change anything in our life if we're not willing to invest in it. Because we got to understand that change requires an investment. You can't go through, if you learn anything from this pandemic, is that you got to change your approach to how you see, how you're doing life. Because remember, we're human beings, not human doings. And remember that Jesus is, he can change it. What are you bringing to Jesus that only he can change? And 35, it says, for, for in Mark, on Mark 8, 35 says, for what, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me, for the gospel's sake, for the good of those, for someone to gain the whole world and lose his whole soul. As I think of, as you think about it, what good is it for someone to gain this whole world and yet forfeit his souls? Your soul. Soul care number one is face it till you make. We got to face our issues, y'all. We can't keep running. We got to stop running. Two, soul care two, we got to keep hope alive. And three, we got to keep believing. And understand this, you can't do it alone. The most important assets for us as believers, as the body of Christ, is that we have the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. 
So I invite, as we pray, I'm inviting you guys to think about some changes that you know that you need to rectify and only that he can rectify. There's some things that you know you need to bring and identify in your life that can challenge you to continue to keep growing because we, we always have to take the posture of a student. We have to take a posture of a student. We always got to keep learning. And it invites us to that as, as we keep growing in, in our faith, as we keep allowing the Holy Spirit to change us and multi and use us for his glory, we got to identify those issues. Some things you got to what some things you got to keep, some things you got to let go. So I, I pray this that you helped you. So let's let's pray and close out. I hope this series is truly challenging your faith, challenging you that you ain't got it all together. We got to be like the disciples. They understood that they didn't, they didn't have it all together, but they knew who can get it all together. And we got to face that. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we thank you for allowing us to, allow me to be able to be used by you to help us to grow and to, to change, what find out things that we need to change so we can live well for you so we can not only live well, so we can hear those words, well done and good and, and faithful servant, that you have been faithful with a few things and I can give you much. That word, those phrases, well done, Lord God. Help us to live, in order to hear that, that, that we apply what really means to live well is by doing your will, doing, seeing things from your viewpoint and be able to apply those things and, and to re and invest in the word. And to challenge our mind and to challenge our, our, our ideas that think that does not bring you glory. Remove any control. You know, give us the fruits of the spirit, Lord God. Love, joy, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, Lord God. Change us from the inside out, Lord God. We thank you as we uh, leave here, but never your presence. We just thank you for who you are, Lord. Forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Feel free, you guys, to meet and greet at each other at the end here. Uh, talk, chat, do whatever you need to, to just engage with each other. But thank y'all, man. God is good. And I hope this word changes your perspective, changes how you see things to continue to grow, grow and be stronger for who God created you to be. Continue to pray for me and turn them out and my family up here as we continue to keep going. So Enjoy this time. Y'all have a great day. God bless.